get my PowerPoint. So, uh, yes. So, after the election in 2010, it's continuing a political theme here, but I won't be doing any dancing. Um, I, uh, uh, very quickly, what happened was that uh, uh, Michael Gove uh, became the education secretary. And, uh, well, no, no, he's a very nice man. <laughs> and, uh, so nice, I ran against him in the 2015 election, and I too lost. <laughs> but, uh, but I wrote, uh, very soon after he came in, he brought in something called the EBAC. And, uh, and in the EBAC, really, it seriously damaged uh, the arts in schools because it relegated it to one subject within eight subjects that kids could choose. And in fact, there was only one art subject you could choose. So if you wanted to study drama, uh, uh, or, or music and art together, that's out. You can't really do that. Uh, so I wrote him a letter. And, uh, and this letter is a large painting. Uh, and it's actually the cover of a spoken word record available downstairs. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll read you a little bit of it. And it was really inspired, this letter. Uh, it was a bit po-faced but there are some funny elements to it. It says, letter to Michael Gove, MP, Secretary of State for Education. So one side of this record, I played it to Billy Bragg recently, and he said I'd made a schoolboy error because one side is spoken word, and then the music is on the other side. It's on the, so you have to buy two of these records and play them and buy two record players in order, in order to get the full effect. But I, I'm going to read you the... <laughs> A little bit off one side. So, his letter to Michael Gove, MP, Secretary of State for Education, 25th of July 2011. In memory of Lucian Freud and Amy Winehouse, who died this weekend. And that weekend, I was playing with my band, who are an improvising electroacoustic outfit at the Barbican. And the idea is we were going to play for 36 hours non stop. And it seemed like a lot of fun, but that weekend, became very dark because it was also the weekend when Anders Breivik, or whatever his name is, shot all these young people in Norway. It was an appalling, it was an appalling weekend. And I just thought, crikey, you know, uh, hope has been wiped out on some kind of level. And I loved Amy Winehouse and I loved everything that she did. So I wrote to Michael, I said, Dear Michael Gove, art, images, artifacts, songs, culture are the principal means by which human beings define themselves. Michael, a look at your tie and shirt combination in images of you online informs me you are not a visually minded person. <laughs> you do not care how you look. Now, I won't go on to read the whole album, but the whole thing was about trying to say why the arts are important in schools. And I have lots and lots of different reasons. Some of them are my own. Some of them are uh, ideas uh, culled from other artists. Um, but it was all about saying, essentially, the arts are important in terms of selfhood. But since writing that, I began to become even more faced in my advocacy for the arts and actually it's not that the arts are a nice to have or that the creative industries federation say the arts are worth 80 billion there are lots of other reasons which are more profound why the arts are important and so i want to take you on a journey now uh, uh, why the arts are important fundamentally to every person in this room every child every person in this country One of the reasons, that, and this is, my, this is my PDF here, a series of beautifully painted little paintings. Uh, one of the reasons, 
Uh, actually, uh, one of the reasons is because artists are broadcasters. Now, you might have noticed my voice is a bit knackered. Uh, it's because I like to talk a lot. But I need you to help me with this. Artists are resonators. We resonate. We ask questions and we try to answer questions and it makes us resonate. I want to hear, this involves audience participation now. I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to bring it up slowly. One, two, three. I can't hear you, Tabernacle! That's very good. It was resonating around the room there. And that's because I can't hear you, Tabernacle. I'll leave my glasses again. No, to read the back of this one. <laughs> In my pocket. These are terrible glasses. Make me look about ninety. Um, even abstract art. Uh, in the sense that the message is the medium, spreads messages. Messages can be the gesture of making art, performance of moving from the dressing room through the green room to the stage, or indeed the gallery. So let's hear it one more time. Art now this is a completely mistaken campaign that I ran with the Art Fund, but with the Art Fund I put up Vote, uh, posters around the country telling young people to go and vote, both in the 2010 election, the 2015 election, and in the Brexit election. And I wonder whether it was a good idea, really. But, <laughs> but, uh, but art is art is like democracy, because, as the German political theorist Hannah Arendt said, uh, we need uh, association. We need performance and we need participation to keep both art and democracy alive. So let's hear it. Vote. Let's hear it, hear it again. Vote. We need to tell our young people to go and use their democratic mandate. And go and vote. Because, now this might be difficult to read this one. Because. <laughs> Yes, they are. Let's hear it again. The arts are the oxygen of democracy. Yeah, that's what they are. They're the, art, they're the oxygen of democracy. Because it's hard to build a hospital when a bomb is falling, and it's much harder to build something, to make something, than to draw, draw something. And this is a, when I originally painted this slightly po faced. Uh, painting, it was because there was a satire of what the, uh, of the power of art to talk to politics. And I sold that painting to the Tate and they made a postcard of it and they sell thousands of these postcards that say make art not war. And actually it impressed upon me that actually we have to make art and not war and art is about making things and not destroying things. So let's hear it loud and proud. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> All artists, they don't like to mention it, but we are on a mad campaign. And you can see it, you know, Grayson and Tracy, but they're all on a lunatic campaign. But actually, along with the mad self promotion, are actually some incredibly powerful. Uh, and exciting idea. So we have to think that art is a campaign. Because your voice needs you. Your voice needs you. I am God voice. I need your voice. Your voice needs you. Okay. Otis Redding, ladies and gentlemen. Otis Redding used to put passion into art and music, really seriously, you know. He, he, he used to 
And now I need you all to stand up, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's going to be difficult for some of you, but come on, let's try and do it. I need you to stand up. And we're going to do, we're going to do a bit of Otis Redding now. And Otis Redding, one of his key things that he was the king of, he was the king of got to got to. We've got to got to. Let's hear it. We've got to got to. I can't hear you. Got to got to. I can't hear you, Tabernacle. Got to got to. Save the art history A level. Thank you. You sit down again now. Because all schools should be art schools. All schools should be art schools. Let's hear it. All schools should be art schools. All schools should be art schools. All schools should be art schools. All schools should be art schools because if you get 36 kids in a class and you get them doing an art project, you get them doing a still life or a printing project, you get 36 different answers to the questions that the teacher places those in front of those kids. And it teach us, teaches us that there are multiple answers to the questions that humanity faces. Uh, and it's a really important thing. If you teach a child to sing, if you give them a piece of paper, if you teach them to dance, you teach that child... Uh, you teach that child to sing and you give them a voice. And it means that you will hear from them later. Okay. So, so this is a print I made. You were saying that we made for liberty. So we've made a series of prints. Artists have made a series of prints for liberty. I'm going to read this to you now. Uh, so it says, uh, in 2011, I took part in a protest at Tate Modern about the arrest of artist Ai Weiwei. But he was just one man, just the tip of an iceberg. Hundreds of whistleblowers, artists, journalists, poets and writers are locked up or like Ashraf Fayed threatened with death. Repressive regimes crush the arts, kill the poet, and blow up the ancient city. If you blow up the ancient city, you say to the people, no matter what you do, what you aspire to, how much you hope, violence will rob your life of meaning and you will have no legacy. Our subscription, and this was really thinking about Michael Gove, because Michael Gove then became the justice minister charged with getting rid of our commitment to the Bill of Human Rights. You know, it's our... Our commitment to international human rights gives us a voice, it gives artists a voice, it gives me a voice to stand outside the Tate and say, don't lock up Ai Weiwei, it gives us a voice to demand human rights for all, celebrate life and support the Human Rights Act and support liberty in their aim to save the Human Rights Act. Because democracy depends upon drawing, folks. <laughs> Let's hear it. And and that's because you know uh, the UN Charter enshrines the right of the child to participate in its culture because... Thank you very much.